So welcome everyone. Welcome to our student experience webinar, um, part of the ANU webinar week. And thank you for joining us today. My name is Akib and I work as the senior marketing officer at the College of Science and College of Health and Medicine. I will be your host for today's session. But before we get started, um, some housekeeping things to note. This webinar will be recorded and the recording will be made available after the event. You will be able to ask any questions or make comments via the question answer tab, which is located at the bottom of your screen. If you do not wish your question or comment to be in the recording, please contact science at anu.edu.au after the event. And I will also leave those details in the chat um, so you can get in touch with us. So today I would like to introduce our panelists, Emily, uh, who's studying the Master of Earth Sciences Advanced and Bowie, who's studying the same program as well at ANU. Today they're here to share their insights and experience as a student um, at ANU and to answer any questions that you may have. So let's get started. Uh, hi, Bowie and Emily, thank you for joining us. Um, could you tell us about yourself, your background and how you chose to study earth sciences in specifically. Um, so Emily, do you wanna go first? Yeah, sure. So hi everyone, um, my name's Emily Oborski. So I'm a recent graduate uh, from the master's program at ANU, um, specifically from the research school of earth sciences. So just a bit about me, I definitely enjoy the more creative things in life. So in my hobbies include visual art. I love painting, um, but I also love to enjoy, explore the outside world and hence, you know, the drive to study earth sciences. Um, so I'm a, attending as a domestic student and I've lived in Canberra my whole life. So I've actually went through primary school, high school, college, and straight to ANU all in Canberra actually. So I specifically chose to study earth science because I've always been fascinated on the planet we live on and the universe. So at school, I was actually lucky enough to attend earth science classes. Um, I really enjoyed the field trips and engaging with science. And that motivated me to continue to study earth science at university. So I've always been curious of the mechanisms of this planet, um, why we're here, why things happen, uh, how do they happen, etc. So you can kind of use this knowledge to understand the processes which also occur on other planets too. Um, additionally, earth science is often multidisciplinary. So you are not just uh, tied down to one field. You can use, for example, if you love coding, uh, you can apply that to geophysics and seismology. Uh, however, if you really like marine science, um, and you have a knack for biology, then uh, biogeochemistry is right down your alley. So for me personally, uh, mine's a bit of a funny one. So I really love art and design, and that actually is used very well in conjunction with earth science. Um, and it helps me communicate ideas, uh, scientific uh, posters and someone. Uh, and there's endless possibilities there. So uh, throughout school, I had that interest in art and science. Um, and I guess another reason I wanted to study earth science because I wanted to work in a really interactive uh, environment. And I was never really the one for just a nine to five office job. And I was hoping I could get a job uh, in earth science, which required maybe some field work, uh, running lab analysis, run your feet. Um, but even if I did get an office job, I think I'd be pretty interested in the subject. Um, and not really accept it just for a financial stability. And I really wanted to have a career in life where I can look back and not really have uh, any regrets. <laughs> Great, what a wonderful story, Emily. Thank you, quite fascinating. How about you, Bowie? So what's your background and what motivated you to study earth sciences? Yeah, okay. Uh, then good afternoon, everyone. This is Bowie and I come from China. <clears throat> and I'm an international student in ANU. I also just graduated from <clears throat> Master of Earth Science recently. And before I came to Australia, I have finished a bachelor degree in geography and education. So uh, the reason why I choose Earth Science is I personally quite like this subject and I think it's very interesting. And I will also want to be a geography teacher in high school. 
So I think it's better to like learn something more about this earth. And yeah, so another reason like why I choose this subject is if I study earth science that I can get a lot of field trip like to go to somewhere that uh, normal people don't go. Yeah, that's, that's it, that's the reason. <laughs> Right. So um, one of the other things that um, actually I wanted to ask you about is about uh, your move to Canberra. So since you're from China and, you know, you moved to Canberra um, to study at ANU. So what was your experience like? <coughs> yeah, just like uh, uh, new people to Canberra. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, I come from a subtropical city in China that uh, in Canberra is very different from the city I lived. The winter here is a bit too cold for me. <laughs> yeah, so that's the very first thing because um, the season I come here is winter, but the good thing is we get heating. Yeah, mm. and another thing that really shocked me when I first came to Canberra is the parrot. So they are really lovely and they are very beautiful. And I can see them like everywhere. And I also like um, see a lot of animal in Canberra that's a little bit unusual in my city. Um, so it's a very, and it's for me, it's not like a very big and fancy city like Sydney or Melbourne, but it's, a really nice place for living and starting. And the people I met here is very, very friendly. Yeah, that's my personal experience, um, experience about this city. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for me, I have lived in Sydney as well. So I have lived in Sydney for two years, then it's been about two and a half years that I'm living in Canberra. So I think uh, um, as you know, as you can see, I'm already wearing a hoodie because it's uh, chilly now. It's because it's evening here as well. Um, but at the same time, it's got four distinct seasons. Uh, the best part I love about Canberra is the coffee. The coffee is amazing. Um, unlike other cities, I think we get the best coffees in um, Canberra. Um, the other, other thing is uh, the travel time. The travel time is um, so easier to get to one point to the other point. It's just within 20 minutes from point A to point B. Uh, the beaches is about two hours away. The snowy mountains is about another two hours away from, you know, on the other side. So you get the best of the both worlds. So you live, um, you know, where there is a lot of nature, you get to do a lot of bushwalking. Uh, but at the same time, you can always visit the beach or go to the snowy mountains when it's, when it's cold. So I love Canberra personally. How about you, Emily? What's your, so you're from Canberra. So yes. what's your take on um, Canberra? How do you like it? Well, it's it's pretty much what you guys said. Like, it's in between kind of a larger city like Sydney and a, a smaller, quieter town. So, you know, you, you do have the opportunity to go to the city centre and, you know, you have great places to eat out with your friends. You know, you can do shopping, whatever mm -hmm. you want to do. You have that city centre. But then at the same time, you can, depending on the suburb you live in, you can just cycle or drive out 20 minutes and you're already in some nature reserve with waterfalls or rivers. And, you know, I often, like one weekend, if it's nice and warm, I'd just go hiking along the river. And it's really great because we also have our Stromlo Observatory and that's uh, situated where there's not much light pollution. So when you go hiking to those places, you can have a barbecue, you can see like the night sky. It's really cool. Um, and yeah, like it, I love Canberra in that sense. And, you know, there's not much traffic jams because I personally own a car. So it is, it is long to go from one side of Canberra to the other, but generally in the middle and where uni is situated, uh, you really don't need a car. You can just cycle everywhere. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, the, the advantage of the university is that it's just located in the center of the city. Um, and, you know, it, it's a short walk from the university to the shops or to the city center. So that makes us really 
convenient for the students who say live on campus or who are planning to live somewhere around the campus as well so um, it's it's really well connected and now that we have got the tram the tram is uh, you know just uh, just uh, a few a few meters away from the university campus so students can take the tram to travel so it's it's quite convenient um, i would say so Emily, with the with with the Master of uh, Earth Sciences, the program that you've studied, um, so Earth Sciences itself is such a broad uh, area of study. Yeah. So, um, what in Earth Sciences is your area of interest? So my area of interest, I specifically love volcanoes, and I'm uh, specialising in geochemistry, a bit of petrology. So yeah, um, my specific project um, is looking at that um, volcano part of earth science and volcanology. Uh, it is, I, I would like to point out, ANU does not offer specific volcanology courses. However, you do learn all about volcanoes and their mechanisms within uh, each course. And it's always, you know, it's always mentioned, you always um, learn all the basics and you can go into further details if you need. Um, but yeah, that's my specific area of interest. Right. How about you, Bowie? So what, what did you um, specialize in? Okay, so uh, I'm in the marine biological chemistry group. So most um, our group mainly focused on the relationship between like element and the small organism in the seawater. Like some of the PhD students, they culture the phytoplankton in the lab mm -hmm. and like control if you don't put uh, some element like iron or copper in the seawater what kind of like what how this situation influenced the phytoplankton and yeah so I very before I choose my supervisor and a project I personally quite interested in marine or the ocean it's like it cover about uh, sixty percent of the Earth, and we not really know too much thing about that. Yeah, and and another thing is uh, the future climate change, especially the um, emission of carbon dioxide, how that influences the Earth and how that influences the ocean. Mm -hmm. And so, part of my project can is trying to answer that question is like how the future climate change will uh, influence the ocean and influence our human. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's really good. So uh, when you were making the decision of, uh, you know, studying further, studying a master's program, um, what, what led you um, choose a new for your master's program? Uh, yeah. Well, so the very first thing is I chose Australia because I like this country. Yeah. And so within Australia, there are a lot of good uni, but ANU is my final choice because it get, ANU get really good reputation mm -hmm. and it get really high ranking in earth science. Yeah. And so I personally quite like Canberra. And so, oh, that's ANU is in Canberra and it get really good earth science. So let's do it. Yeah. Right. So um, is there any specific thing that you really love? So you've completed, uh, just, you've just completed your program. Um, yep. So what is, what is uh, something that was, uh, you know, that's, uh, that will probably remain as a memory to you of these two years? It could be something about the, say, ANU, or it could be anything related to the program. So what did you love the most? Uh, I think it's my... <laughs> Uh, it's my research project. I really, really enjoyed it. It's, yeah, it's part of because my supervisor is really nice and part of like, is I, I really like what I'm doing. So when uh, my, my whole degree is a two year degree, the first semester, the uh, um, Research School of Earth Science will offer a course to all new students. Mm -hmm. And that course is invite all the group in the school to give us a lecture, like to introduce what they are doing, what's their main job. So like to give us an idea, like what kind of uh, aspect of, in our school. And then uh, I choose marine geo, um, biogeochemistry and, and our um, 
personal tutor emphasize like you need to choose something you're really interested in or yeah. you already you really want to do yeah so yeah and my supervisor is really really nice and he um gave me a lot of help in my project because like before i do um marine science i i actually started in education and geography i do not know much about marine chemistry and he offered me a lot of help and like teach me how to do the lab work how to run the machine and okay. yeah and finally i like get the data and write the thesis and kind of like finished all my job and i also proud of my job yeah that's that's really good that's really good to hear so how about you emily what how what um led you to choose anu um as your you know university to study the master's program um so i guess for me i was a college student in canberra and i was still kind of deciding you know what what do i want to do and actually at that time i was really tossing up between well do i want to do like graphic design or something more artistic or do i want to go to science and so it was really a bit of a <laughs> interesting decision so what happened is i did enroll for both uc and anu uh, because ANU did not actually offer graphic design. So I thought, well, I'll just enroll into kind of whatever um, I get and hope for the best. But mm -hmm. in the end, I luckily got into ANU. Um, and I started off uh, as an undergrad, as an art stu student. Right. So I was um, doing visual arts. And then I was sort of missing, I was really missing that science part of it. So that's when I added on um, a science degree. And I guess from there, I just... I really, really enjoyed science and what I was learning. So then I thought, well, I, you know, I knew the professors already and I knew there might be some interesting projects coming up. So I got in contact with a few of them and then that's how I ended up, you know, being a student in a master's degree. Um, and yeah, from there it's, it's been amazing. And also ANU offers, when you do um, earth science, we offer amazing field trips as well. Um, mm. This is both undergraduate and masters. Mm. Uh, for example, this was in my undergraduate, but I know you can do this in masters as well. And they offer courses where you can go to the Great Barrier Reef, um, for example, and go uh, do two weeks intensive courses in Indonesia or Japan. But uh, however, I'm not sure about that because of COVID now, um, but I know, you know, they do offer these opportunities and ANU has been really great in that sense. Mm, right. Um, so uh, about, about the, uh, you know, the program itself, the, the Master of Earth Sciences Advanced. So uh, with this, can you tell about the, how the program structure looks like for those two years? Uh, because I believe there is a big component of research um, as well. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I can talk about um, also my research as well, but w mm. with the structure, um, the first, uh, it's quite flexible. So what I personally did is um, uh, my whole first year was just coursework because you have to do one year of coursework. Yeah. Um, if, if you do full time, for example, you can also do part time and extend that. Um, and you have usually one year of a research component. So yeah, people uh, sometimes possibly start research but I, I think usually people uh, do coursework first and then you know maybe slowly start their research you can also have semesters where you have half half so you know two units um, two of your courses are you know classes you want to attend but then the other two are your research component so it's very flexible as to how you want to do it if you want to go full-time part-time um, yeah for me so I did first one year of coursework and then one year of my research component and um, for that what I did is a research program uh, with my supervisor Penny King um, she's quite wonderful and uh, what I did is I looked at the ash products from the 2018 Kilauea eruption and yeah for from that I looked at the processes um, of how the eruption occurred, uh, the eruption history, and the mechanisms of that eruption. Right. So, do you also have to like submit a thesis along once you've done your uh, research? 
Yes, so uh, during this research component, what you do is uh, you do heaps of um, reading papers, um, you, you do your lab work, and then uh, you start writing a big thesis, which is not due until uh, the end of your research component. And right. that uh, usually uh, one to two weeks after is a final presentation. So you deliver that, um, you know, kind of summarizing your whole thesis and what you did. Um, and yeah, that's basic. You don't have any um, assessment before, I think. No, it's just uh, the thesis yeah. and your final presentation. Right. So uh, with your project specifically, which was related to Volcano, was there a good balance between uh, the lab and the applied work you did um, versus the theory component of it? Yeah, so um, this is based on also before COVID, I'd like to say, because now it may change. But um, it was definitely a good balance where I was, I was in the lab a lot, actually, uh, looking at all my uh, fine ash, because my, uh, my ash grains took a while to prepare um, in order to analyze them at the Center of Advanced Microscopy, which is just down the road as well in ANU. Um, and yeah, there were days where I was just on the machine um, and that was really exciting. That was actually the most exciting parts of my research. And then you would go back to your office and kind of process the data. Um, and yeah, you would do your theory as well. So for me personally, there was a good balance because um, yeah, I had to do lab work and then um, theoretical work as well, just to really sum it all up. Yeah. Wow, that's good to know. Um, so, Bawi, with you, um, so what was your research that uh, you worked on during your master's? Okay, uh, I'm working on the element iron in the seawater. So, because like iron is very important for phytoplankton, that phytoplankton is very um, small creature that live in water. So, they have um, chlorophyll and they can photosynthesize. So that makes it really important for the whole climate because they absorb the carbon dioxide during photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. And uh, iron is like a very essential element for their growth. Um, so uh, my work is to analyze the iron isotope in the Southern Ocean because like different um, biological process we may fractionate the iron isotope. So we can use such value to trace like where the iron comes from, how they get recycled in the seawater. So we, we know more about the iron that, and if like some people want to do a model uh, about modeling how the future climate change will uh, influence the whole ocean, so they can put this um, uh, element, like put iron into the consideration and make it more accurate. Yeah, so it's like give us some information about the climate change. Right, that sounds really exciting. So did you have a lot of uh, field work to do? Uh, not really. So all my samples have been collected in 2017. So before I saw my lab work, they just been stored in the fridge. And so I, I my, uh, my, I plan to do a voyage to um, the southwest of Australia in April this year, but it got canceled. So, which is really, really sad. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, if you do marine science, the, uh, you will get a big chance to go to a voyage to walk on a ship to collect sample or yeah to do some work on the ship. Right. So uh, now that you've completed your master's, what, what plans do you have, um, you know, after, since you've completed your master's program? Yeah, so for the long time uh, plan is I'm trying to back to China to find a job as a teacher in high school. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that's always been your goal, isn't it? Like you, want, you wanted to teach the kids. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. How about you, Emily? What, what, what are your plans? So I guess uh, for now I'm aiming to find a job in Canberra. Um, originally I had planned to find a job overseas and obviously get away from Canberra for once because I've been here my whole life, you know, but like, no, I love this place. So I guess um, 
because of the pandemic, I will just try to find some local job, hopefully, possibly with uh, Geoscience Australia or CSIRO. There are a lot of um, postgraduate opportunities and um, graduate roles. Uh, I also, I guess, I have considered um, pursuing a PhD, but that also kind of depends on the COVID situation and how universities are coping with this pandemic. Yeah. Uh, in the future and so forth. True. So uh, one of the, so while you were doing your uh, master's program and you know while you're learning, doing coursework, as well as while you're doing research, uh, what were some of the facilities uh, that you accessed uh, at at the School of Earth Sciences? I uh, yeah. So um, with my project, I so I like I said, I went to um, the Center of Advanced Microscopy, and there are plenty of um, different facilities around RSCS and ANU. So um, can we call it CAM? So I'll just say CAM so I don't have to <laughs> say the whole thing. But in CAM, um, you have all these really, um, you know, these machines like. Uh, I'm not sure if I can explain them all. They call SCM microprobe, but they look uh, in very much detail of your samples. So you can look in um, the micron um, yeah. or nanometers, even, you know, the smallest detail. If you want to see what, uh, for me, what mineral is forming, um, mm. you know, or I don't know, you can look at uh, the chemistry as well. Uh, also in RSCS, they have. Um, all these different machineries um, that are on offer. I guess you could also go to uh, other universities if uh, RSCS doesn't have what you need, and that is very much possible. But usually we have all the facilities you need um, and everyone's willing to help as well. So I always, you know, sometimes I stop by professors um, offices just to get their opinion. And, and that's really nice. So many people are, here to support you uh you know other postdocs professors as well yeah. um and yeah so that's very lovely yeah absolutely i think we've got one of the best facilities as well on campus um one of the high like a few highlights for me is the mass spectrometer that we've got used for carbon dating uh then we've got a very good uh, petrology lab as well on campus that's um you know really exciting um and and then also the the uh, shrimp spectrometer which is, um, you know, the mass spectrometer, which is again, you know, amazing piece of equipment. So apart from that, we do have a lot of uh, facilities. I think I've been to, uh, you know, just just to have a look at the facilities that we have at Earth Sciences, and I was, I was impressed. How about you, Bowie? Did you use uh, anything in specific for your projects? Yeah, I do. So, so our group have our own lab. It's like it's. Um, people work on seawater uh, work in that lab and um, so the lab is open for uh, the whole group is and uh, what I need to do is I just before I really use the lab my supervisor just gave me an induction like to describe how the lab is working like what kind of machine or what kind of uh, chemical you need and yeah so and for the instrument is i feel like basically uh all the instruments in our school is available for the student if you need it what you need to do is just uh, you might need to contact the lab manager or let your supervisor contact them and like to describe why you need it and so they and they will give also give you an induction and then you can start working on the instrument or uh, use use it to run your sample and yeah, I think it's very uh, open to the student who need it. And I also get a lot of help from other supervisors and other like postdoc or PhD student, and they are all very happy to help us. Yeah. Yeah. So with, with the program, the program itself, how flexible do you think is the program? Were you able to manage, um, you know, balance your study, work and research at the same time? Yeah, I personally think this uh, project is very flexible. It's, uh, so the whole structure is like Emily said, the first year is coursework, the second year is uh, the research component. And 
what you need to do is just submit your thesis at the end of your project and do the final presentation. And how you do it, it's all up to you. So I discussed with my supervisor, we set several milestones, like how we, uh, when I submit the proposal, when I start uh, process the sample, when I finish all the lab work. And so it's, it's, yeah, it's really just up to you how you want to do it. And because I also get a part-time job, and sometimes, usually I only work on weekend, but some, sometimes they may need to need me to work a day during the weekdays. So, and um, my supervisor is okay if I take half day or a day off during the weekday. Yeah. And yeah, you don't need to be in the office or the lab every day. Like you work here from nine to five. And yeah, you can also work at home or you wanna like take several day off, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. so it's very flexible, it's just up to you. Yeah. How was your experience, Emily? Do you think uh, did you got a lot of flexibility while you're studying? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, it's, yeah, it's so flexible. So you can do full-time or part-time. Um, you can take some days off if you're not feeling well or you just want a bit of a break, that's fine. The supervisors are quite happy um, to talk to you about that. Um, I also did a part-time job as well for the most part of my master's and that was mainly for financial aid. However, um, as my thesis writing uh, came in, well, I just sort of just dropped that um, job and I was able to handle it because actually there are jobs offered throughout university, just small casual jobs you can um, apply for for extra money if you need. But yeah, um, in my experience, the master's program is very, very flexible. Yeah. Great. Um, so finally, uh, how do you feel about the um, current COVID-19 situation? Um, so as, as a student, I know, you know, a lot of things that change, um, there are the modes of delivery, the way you work, everything changes. So how did you guys uh, deal with this change um, in particular? Um, should I go? Or... Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, so I was actually quite fortunate um, because with the pandemic and university closure, that was around the time I was finishing all my lab work. Um, there was a few things I wasn't able to get done, but it, it wasn't that impactful to my final project and thesis. So when it came to writing, I just have to adjust a few minor sections. Um, however, yeah, I know that now labs have started to reopen and yeah. people can go back in with, with certain precautions and there is, you know, um, certain training you might have to do online before you go back in the lab. Um, and yeah, you have to keep that distance and maybe record if you have seen someone, but yeah, those extra precautions. I know that um, in, in terms of coursework, uh, lectures are now um, delivered online. Uh, I think practicals as well. And so it is very possible to learn from home and work from home fine. Um, in my case, when I was finishing up my master's during this pandemic, um, I had a lot of uh, online meetings with my supervisor. So just now, like in Zoom, um, and, you know, I don't think there was any, um, you know, held, I wasn't held back by the whole situation. So I was quite lucky, but I know um, people who had actually had to change the whole project because they started before this pandemic and now they cannot do what they were originally planning to do. Um, however, I know things are starting to open up and yeah, with precaution, you, you can probably go to the lab with analysis or I'm actually not sure when they're planning to reopen classrooms for practicals. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But I think in terms of the, the situation as well, um, especially here in Canberra and the ACT, we are doing pretty, pretty okay. Yeah. And um, everything is seeming to be normal. Um, yeah, it's it's a gradual change, but I think as you as you mentioned, people are being allowed to go back into the labs, into the teaching facilities, and slowly things are um, getting better and better. And I think that's a that's a good move. Um, 
So um, for all of the viewers watching now, uh, please feel free to send your questions on this question answer tab. Um, if you have any questions for us, uh, we will be more than happy to answer. Uh, however, we did get a few questions, um, you know, when we asked you to um, submit them while registering. So we'll take those questions first and we'll start answering your questions as well. Um, so there is a question uh, from one of the students uh, which said, what are the chances of admitting a student looking to pursue a Master of Earth Sciences with an agriculture engineering background? So um, the, the, the answer to this question is uh, there are a few cognate disciplines that we look for and engineering uh, falls under one of those cognate disciplines. So yes, uh, you know, you, you can make an application to ANU if you're really interested in studying the Master of Earth Sciences program. The second question is what jobs can this degree lead to and what electives should I choose in school? I think there are two parts to this questions. Uh, but I think before we get onto the question, Emily or Bowie, please, uh, you know, uh, either of you, do you know what other subjects or specializations a student can do while studying the Master of Earth Sciences program? I know you focused on volcanoes, Bowie, you focused on marine sciences, but I'm sure there are other fields as well, like, you know, your friends or somebody from your class would be doing. Um, so I guess uh, there is definitely a wide variety of specializations you can get into. So uh, you can, for example, if you like structural geology and geological mapping, uh, mm. that's certainly a way you can go. Uh, there's many professors which offer uh, that kind of topic um, as well as if you really, if you like the mining industry uh, and you have an interest in, um, for example, ore deposits, the, the whole um, petrology group is all over that. So yeah, there are many um, different um, courses that are offered as well as professors who are willing to do a project in uh, these different uh, pathways. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good one. Um, so one of the other things is, you know, you both both of you mentioned about the field work and, you know, the field trips. So um, do you mind elaborating that a bit and explaining what the field trip looks like and what was your experience from that? Yeah. Um, who do you want to start on this one? <laughs> you can go first on this one. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so I didn't go too many field trips uh, during these two years, but the one I love most is the one we go to. Um, it's the one about a uh, coral reef. It's a coral reef field trip. Yeah, I don't know, like, do Emily go that? It's, we go to a very small island in Great Barrier Reef, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a course. It's like we... we um, took that course on the island and yeah. on that small island is they get a uh, several it's a small research station on that and they get a small uh, like classroom that where the professor can give us the lecture and our it's a uh, like 10 days field trip so basically every day in the morning we have the uh, an hour lecture and in the afternoon we uh go out to the core reef we we because like each of us have um different project and we get also get a large um group work and we um kind of like observe the coral and try to describe them or classify them and we also develop our own project around that island so my project is about a small isolated pool along the reef yeah so it's it's a very very interesting experience it's like you get a chance to go to Great Barrier Reef mm -hmm. and to see the really fantastic coral and you also like learn how scientists work uh, in outside the lab and the office and you uh, also learn how to think and work as a researcher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very different experience. Yeah. How about you, Emily? Did you go on any field trips? Well, yes. And I actually went on that um, reef field trip as well. So I mm -hmm. believe the course is called a Coral Reef or something. Mm -hmm. um, and 
honestly, you don't need a marine background to do that course. And I highly recommend it because like Bowie said, it's amazing. And you go, um, you can go snorkeling. Like, yes, you learn a lot and you go and you attend lectures, but it's it's truly amazing especially if um, you've always wanted to visit the great barrier reef you go to a um a research island and that's called one tree island and there's no tourists around so you know it's <laughs> it's really amazing um i guess i didn't really go in uh to any field trips during my masters because the ash samples were already uh delivered to anu they were collected by the usgs um mm -hmm. however you know, there is possibility to go collect your samples if that's what you're doing um, as a part of field work for your master's. But um, I know, yeah, in undergraduate, they still offer those courses in a master's level. And um, I did do Mount Isa, for example, and we went to our geological, um, you know, the sites in Mount Isa to map um, and create structural maps. And also, um, yeah, I think there was also, I went to Indonesia um, and I'm not sure if that is offered for masters, but uh, that's where it's um, a new Colombo plan scholarship you get offered and you on a, you just apply, like you apply for the course and you pretty much get that scholarship to go. So all your flights, food, everything's paid for and you, you go, you drive up um, Mount Merapi, uh, you go to the Institute of um, Bandung and yeah, you meet wonderful people. Um, we had people from Germany, students from Germany and Indonesia and ANU all kind of collaborating. And also going back to the field trip uh, at Mount Isa, we were also collaborating uh, with Queensland University students from UQ. So um, there's a very good opportunity to meet new people that, you know, that aren't in your courses. So. Yeah. That's that's wonderful. I think uh, I think your experience was amazing. I yeah. feel I should do um, one or two courses now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I think we are at the end of the session now. Um, so I'd like to thank you both, first of all, for for joining us here today. I know you've had busy schedules. Um, and uh, thank you for joining us. And congratulations on graduating uh, from the Master of Earth Sciences program. Uh, you've, you both have put in some good amount of effort and hard work in this two years and wish you all the best for your future. Um, and for all the viewers, uh, thank you once again for joining us. It was wonderful having you. Uh, we will also be sending out the recording of the webinar um, tomorrow. So uh, yeah, if you, if you feel, feel like revisiting the webinar, please, please feel free to um, after you get the email. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, Emily. Thank you, Bowie. Goodbye and uh, have a good night. Thanks. Thank you, too. Bye.